Now, three months ago, the Electoral Commission, INEC, declared that Bola Ahmed Tinubu had won the presidential election in Nigeria, not with a landslide, but with 37% of the vote, enough for the ruling ABC party to defend its incumbency. Well, now, despite the disputes that have trailed that election result, Mr. Tinubu and the APC government have set their sights on the inauguration on Monday when the president-elect will be formally sworn in. And today, as you heard earlier, they launched the programs that would count down to that seminal event. So, having striven for his chosen goal against the odds, how inspired are Nigerians by Mr. Tinubu's triumph? Or has the rather dark despair over the electoral process that led to this point thrown a wet blanket over his inauguration? Well, let's get to the heart of it all with our commentators who will give us their personal take on the news and issues of the day. And today we have the journalist, political commentator and Arise News Analyst, Dr. Constance Ikoku, and the current affairs analyst, Professor of Communications and Deputy Dean of the Postgraduate School at Bayes University in Abuja, Professor Abiodun Adeni. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. And let me come to you, Prof. The inauguration just days away. The proper countdown has started today. What sort of reception is Bola Tinubu going to get from Nigerians as he's sworn in? It won't be a rock star welcome, will it? <laughs> <laughs> well, first, I think it's one of mixed feelings uh, against the backgrounds of, background of the challenges they've probably been facing um, over the years, particularly in the last eight years of APC. Uh, they're probably going to be filled with apprehension what the next four years and uh, we we'll hold for them, you know, we, when we're having another um, if, if APC president coming in, you know. Um, is it now going to be a question of the uh, continuation of the party policy or a question of personality uh, difference, you know, rubbing on, rubbing off on the kind of administration that is in store for them? You know, all those things, all these things will be in calculation, you know. And of course, during the campaign, you know, forget we had so much about what Balatinobu has done in Lagos, you know, are they going to see a replication of all that he supposedly, uh, that he achieved in Lagos at the national level? And then what, what is his cabinet going to look like? Is it going to be the choice of his cabinet? Is it going to be spies with technocrats like we expect so we can have concrete achievement? Or is it going to be a continuation of what looks like um, a, a half a sad, you know, selection of uh, people manning the commanding heights of the nation state, like we've somewhat had in the, na in the last um, eight years, you know, where uh, it's been so much of, I know this person, I know this person, who knows this person, uh, so much of my friend, you know, who is loyal to me, who should I reward, you know, about patrimony, is that what we're going to continue with? You know, I want to believe that uh, he, uh, he should be slightly different mm. um, going by what he did in Lagos, you know, and the fact that some of his uh, Brits um, have done very well for themselves at the level of development, at the level of policy and economy. Uh, which you, ju you just expect some level, some re replication, um, some differences in terms of uh, personnel management, personnel hiring, personnel management. And of course, uh, it shouldn't be a continuation a situation where he will continue to tolerate people who are non-performing. People like that uh, should be shown the way out. You know, governance is a serious business, and it shouldn't be a situation where middle class should be tolerated. Um, the people are testy, they are angry, they are, they are angry yearning for change, and that change should be concretized you know, through um, the appropriate choice of personnel that will right. run critical sectors of the economy. And maybe before I end, Charles, um, the atmosphere now it may be slightly has its own particular character. This transition is different. You remember that in 1999, it was the dawn of, democ dawn of democracy. The populace was enthusiastic. The military were being seen off. The atmosphere was unique in itself. That's why Obasanjo had a pan-Nigerian support, literally saying so, you know, save the, the Southwest. And of course, in 20, 2007, President Yaradua came in, we had a military head of state handing over uh, to a civilian head of state. It gave us another character, another kind of, a different kind of enthusiasm. And Jonathan contested again in 2011, fine, uh, against uh, President Buhari. Yes, there were riots, but we were happy somewhat that the younger person was stepping in as president. Enthusiasm was heightened right. then. Then, of course, come, come forward again to mm. um, 2015. It, was, it assumed a different special character because we saw a sitting president handing over, you know, um, to uh, an opposition candidate that defeated him. We saw it 
something very unique in this country. We probably never heard of. But remember that the victory of Buhari there was not so much about the love Nigeria had for him. It was just a momentary right or wrong, correct or incorrect, groundswell right. of opinion Briefly. against yeah. groundswell of against the incumbent. You know that was finding it difficult. You know. Um, to deal with insecurity, particularly the insurgency that came up in the Northeast. And Nigeria just wanted to change the kind of progress, and Buhari was a principal beneficiary. Right. So he gave a different kind of atmosphere as well. So you what's know, happening this now, time? Now we are having a different atmosphere where um, an APC, a, a, a president is handing over to another president from a different party, apart from the dominant party um, that held sway, from 1999 up to 2015. And that's why the atmosphere is a little bit, um, it, it look, looked docile because people are really Gloomy. circumspect. Yeah, people right. are really circumspect. Okay. But the onus is finally, the onus is now. Well, that's a, that's a rather long finally. <laughs> finally, Charles. <laughs> finally, finally, the onus is now. Um, constant. Let me finish, Charles. Jumping out the bit. One more sentence, Charles. <laughs> Finally, the onus is now on the president-elect, you know, right. to recharge the atmosphere, you know, and not get the people disappointed. Okay. We hope he does that. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> Dr. Ikoku, is it safe to say that Mr. Tinubu is a pretty polarizing figure and that there'll be many who won't be happy to see him sworn in as president? He is. Um, he won with how many, what percentage? 37%. Yeah, 37 percent, percent of the vote. If he was that popular... Yes, there were three candidates, but if he was hugely popular, he would have gotten more figures. Mm. And even the figures are contested, uh, so they're, they're in court. Um, in Lagos, where he was governor, there has been contention since he left power because there is the feeling that he's he held or he's holding Lagos hostage. Mm. He's been involved in every governor that has come after him, and people call him a godfather. You know, if, he, if he's not interested in you becoming governor or holding positions in the state, that you have no power being there. So, yes, he is a polarizing figure. Uh, the thing, though, that, well, he's gotten the power he's been looking for so many years. And I think, Charles, it is for tweeters that today he's been given the, the, the honor of the grand commander of the mm. Federal Republic of Nigeria and, you know, his uh, running mate, um, Alahaji Shatima. And today is also the celebration of Africa Day. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, yeah. May 25th. I've, I've seen a lot of people. N yes, sort of yes. Um, so May 25th is a commemoration. It's an annual commemoration of the African Union. You mm. know, it started with the Organization of African Union in Addis Ababa uh, on May 25th, 1963. So 30 out of 32 uh, independent states then in Africa signed that charter mm. um, in Addis Ababa. And every year was supposed to look at the continent, um, assess the progress, uh, the challenges, and l review what we've done and what we're going to be doing for the future. And it's, it's a day when you reflect and think, with all that our forefathers have done concerning Africa and Pan-Africanism advancing the continent, where are we today? Where is Nigeria today? I mean, I was thinking seriously about it. Where are we today? What have we done with our lives, our politics? Look at the resurgence of uh, coups in Africa, all over the continent. There is a reason for that. Why is there so much instability in Nigeria? There are reasons for that. Poor governance is a problem. You know, the hollowness of life, you know, the legitimacy crisis that the leaders have. You know, this type of democracy, so-called democracy, is not sustainable. And people are exasperated. Mm. Yes, you say it's a democracy. I listened to the, the president-elect talking today when he received the honor. You know, he made some comments and he, he, he talked about we are imbued with faith in our purpose and belief in our collective ability to welcome uh, the challenges that, that co confront us. You know, he talks about collective, but that collective, you cannot abuse that collective. You have to do the right things. There have to be rules. There have to be regulations. Uh, people have to follow the rules and play by the rules. If not, that collective is not there. Mm. You destroy the center and you scatter that collective and you don't have a country. So he has a lot of work in his hands. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, Prof, um, you, you are a man with an ear to the ground. I mean, beyond the fact that you are a professor of communications, I mean, you, yeah. communications is about communicating. <laughs> um, 
the upcoming Tinubu presidency, yeah. what signals are you getting from the international community beyond sort of Africa? I mean, she was talking about mm. this being Africa Day, and I mean, we know there are going to be lots of African heads of state coming and so on, presumably to the swearing in. But beyond that, will he be welcomed fully into the international, particularly the Western leadership fold with this issue of legitimacy hanging over his head? Uh, well, first, the question of legitimacy will be dealt with by the courts. And mm. of course, they've already started the process, you know, and the, the, the map and the route is clear cut now. We just have to look forward to that, that at some point we'll have a closure to the instrumentality of the court. Mm. You know, but back to your question, you know, the international community is not uh, markedly different from the local community in terms of our internal policy is what's going to determine the essence how we are uh, how we are perceived from in, in the outside world, and that's why international relations scholars will tell you that uh, foreign policy is largely shaped by local policy. Mm. Now, if uh, Tinubu, despite all the uh, all the controversies around him, if he comes in and does well, of course, if we find him impressive, the international community will also find him impressive. Mm. Because first and foremost, you know, they are looking up to us to reorganize ourselves, to put ourselves on the path, on the salutary path, you know, where we will not constitute nuisance to the other parts of the world that we, like we are somewhat doing now in some circles you know where we don't become we don't degenerate into a crisis such mm. that our people god forbid will become refugees in neighboring countries no no responsible international community will desire that for any nation and that's why you can see them very very ambivalent in how they are responding to the tinubu to the prospective tinubu presidency that's their their coloration and that's how it's going to be you know um until probably they see something different mm. and do not forget in the West African sub we are witnessing crisis. Uh, democracy is somewhat on the retreat in some states. Chad, Mali, um, is it Guinea or Cote, Cote, Guinea or something? One other country like that. You know, but yeah, nobody wants that to happen in Nigeria because Nigeria is a different kind of country. We are a huge, a very influential population is heavy, mm. and of course we have gone through some complexities. We have grown in the last twenty something years in our democracy. In terms of longevity, we have done very well. We can also raise questions. We may raise questions around the character of, of the of our democracy. But do not forget, democracy itself is not um, it's a journey. It's not necessarily a destination. Mm. As long as we continue to work at it, we might get to where we want to be. We, we might be at where we want to be at some point uh, in the future. So the onus is on us, Charles, you know, um, you know to, uh, on our leaders, really, particularly Tinubu in the, in the circumstance, you know, to just make sure that uh, he walks towards the fulfillment of his manifesto, you know, improve the living conditions of the people, deal with the problems, some of the problems we are having, insecurity, um, banditry, um, kidnapping, and of course, work on the economy, um, stabilize our polity further than we are seeing in our court wastes, court corruption, enhanced transparency. If all these things become evident such that right. our youths, the teeming youths who are externalizing their hope, um, can begin to look away from that, you know, and of course we can see a future in this country. I'm sure the international community will join us, they right. wish us well, and their gestures will be one of goodwill. And presumably, Dr. Ikoku, Nigerians as well will leap onto that bandwagon because I mean the, the points I think Prof made are, are quite important ultimately in spite of those issues of you know the perception that the elections were manipulated and you know potentially I mean the whatever result emerges in the end um, that that might also have been doctored I mean the the bottom line really is his performance in the final analysis yes people want a clean obviously um, legitimate way of getting into office but if he can lead the great comeback as Prof said for the Nigerian economy for security and all the rest of it Nigerians would give him a chance wouldn't they I mean, he has the chance to do that. I don't know how he's going to lead uh, a fantastic comeback. The challenges are many. They are complex. They are deep-rooted. They are difficult. Mm. Uh, so there's no easy one to do this. And both are important. The process of emergence and what you do after you emerge. Because what you are saying is that if, if you decide and you know, conclude that the process is not important, what are you telling your children? And if the process is tainted, it breaks the country. 
if there is no justice, what kind of country do you have? That is why there's a resurgence of coups all over Africa, because the wrong people come into power and they usually do not do the right thing. You say someone gets into power, oh, they begin to clean up the place. I was listening to Mary Koku saying that more clean people need to come into power. No relation I, to you, of yeah, course. No, no, absolutely no relation. <laughs> different surnames spelled, right. spelled differently. Yes, the right people need to come into uh, office. But when you have a political system that sort of is like a gatekeep against the other people that have what it takes, the competence, but do not have the money mm. to come into politics. You have to change it if you want to widen and expand the space so that you have more honorary people coming into power, cleaning up. You have to change the process. So those are important. While he has the stage now, um, you know, he has to come in. I was at an event today for the Africa there, and they were talking about the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement and how Nigeria has really fallen you know, behind in its leadership of the continent and how it's important that we pick up that role again. Of course, you have you know, parts of the regions of the continent, like in East Africa, you have Kenya is holding forth very well. You have Southern Africa, you have South Africa, and then you have North Africa, Egypt. Um, in West Africa, yes, we have a lot of population, but um, economically and politically, we're not there. We're so destabilized. So you will have to, you know, do some work to see if Nigeria comes up as a leader again. However, that is also dependent on the economy. Mm. If you are struggling economically, um, I think it affects your politics as well. And if you're struggling politically, vice versa. So there's a lot of work to be done. Right. Um, I think everybody is uh, looking to see what happens after well, the inauguration. Mr. Tinubu, the ball is in your court. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I want to thank both of you very much indeed. Uh, Arise News Analyst, Journalist, Political Affairs Commentator, Dr. Constance Koku, and the Current Affairs Analyst, Professor of Communications and Deputy Dean of the Postgraduate School at Bayes University in Abuja, Professor Abiodun Adeni. Thank you very much indeed. You're welcome.